Um, what else? I wanted to also ask about you guys because we're near the midpoints of the season. You guys are two points off first, level on um level on games played, not level on points, but you guys could potentially be top for a minimum of at the least twenty four hours if you beat I'm us. I'm all for that. I'm all for that. I'm all for yeah, that. Yeah, but I want to <laughs> ask you guys a question. I'll go both to a pair of you one by one on this. Yeah. Title contenders. What are we saying? Because I know with you guys, Don't you like you. playing the flow game. <laughs> exactly that. Same vibes as 2015, 16, where it's like, we're here. We're no, not we're gonna not. say we're too much here. about it. No, it's really good. Really is a secret. Media don't yeah, want to talk say, about it. <laughs> you say that, but really and truly, what are you guys thinking? Well, you guys think it... you could have a go for it this season? Because fact is, yeah. this is the most messed up season. Yeah. Maybe even more of a mess than 15-16. Because 15-16, you can still attribute it to a lot of the top six sides which had a really poor season yeah. and less than six and Spurs and Arsenal were just absolute bottle jobs that season as well. <laughs> this season, everything looks a lot more level. Like it's not just one surprise team in the mix. You've got Southampton who are in around the top six as well. I think Everton are also close by as well. So really and truly, what are your thoughts? Because you do have a chance if we're being real about it. Lee, I'll start with you on this. Yeah, we've got a good chance. Why not? I mean, we're a side that can beat Man City 5-2 and then lose to Fulham though. <laughs> so, the season's wonky. You, you can't predict the season, but um, we are definitely in this. Uh, the media might not want to say it. I, and I'll tell you this now, if, if if it was Chelsea in third place instead of us, it would be a four-way title race between Liverpool, United, Chelsea and Man City. Because it's little of the Foxes, we're, we're not in the conversation. And I prefer that. I prefer it that way, but it's just banter against them. If we do win it, it'll be like this to them again. Austin got my man. Austin got my man. <laughs> Even if you get close, it's a it is a giant up yours to everyone else because I I, I often find that Leicester get so unfairly criticised against mm. for absolutely no reason whatsoever. Um, I know. I know. Yeah, it, it, it's it's mad. I, I remember uh, Neil and Lewis doing a live stream over the summer saying about Chilwell and moving on and whether you thought it was a good move for us or not. And there was a load of not negative comments towards Leicester saying, "Oh, why would you sell one of your better players?" But no one actually talks about how well you buy, you know, yes. are able to replace those kind of players. And yeah. it's it's a really underrated um, situation at Leicester that, uh, that, you know, again, we all respect each other. You're a good team, like not necessarily only a starting 11, good club in general. Neil, go it's, ahead. It, yeah, it's really well run in my opinion, but it's, I'm really glad that we're going under the radar i'm not looking towards the top of the table i'm really happy to be towards the top of the table but even player even teams like aston villa which have now got three games behind if they win all them three games they're up towards our position as well so there is a few teams around that i'm really looking forward to um in terms of what we're doing i think we are doing something right and we've got this kind of tight-knit community that's really working with the squad the players the owners and we've got a new training ground that's coming in and helps as well. So yeah, there's all yeah, these factors yeah. at the moment that are just kind of playing into each other. And are we in the title race? It, I don't want to say yet. In 2016, I say we'll see. All the way up to about a month to go. I was like, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> look at last every, season. Every game, yeah, off. every game at a time, isn't it? You know, let's get 40, yeah. points. Let's get 40 points first, Neil. Dilly ding, dilly dong. Come on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't think that's one for Jamie Vardy to play, unfortunately, uh, back-to-back yeah. football. But he's getting old. He's 34. He's been carrying some sort of hip problem for a few years now under the radar, which a lot of, a lot of the media hasn't picked up, to be fair. He's a top striker, so I don't understand why the media picked up. But then again, we are invisible, aren't we, boys? Um, and uh, <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> we are. Um, but I think with, with Jamie Vardy, you're going to have to rotate him. So Nacho's performing okay in, in Europe, but I still think I feel like Leicester need a new striker. That's that's the one we really need. We've got it. Our system works, but you have to find the right player for that fit. So the reason why we haven't bought in a replacement for Vardy is that they, they're not quite right. So when we brought in Castagna, we knew it would hit the ground running. For Farn, another one, he fit the profile that we needed and he worked and he hit the ground running again. So we're just looking for that opportunity. It, we're going to have to look more now because Vardy is picking up his injuries, even though yeah. he's going to be fit for the Chelsea game. But oh, we so are just he will be fit. He's picked up fit. basically yeah. got, as, as Lee was saying, he's got a hip injury. But what it is, it's kind of something that he, he's 34. Like he's got yeah. these little injuries that are just gonna get over time, they're just gonna pick up and niggle, and yeah. yeah, he'll be fit for the weekend. However, 
uh, sorry for for Tuesday. However, I do think he won't be playing at his hundred percent, or he'll come off at about 60, 65 minutes. Yeah, yeah James Vardy's changed his game. You, you, if you mm. watch him properly, you'll see he's not pressing as hard as he used to. Brendan Rodgers has told him not to go in for challenges that you don't need to, and only run onto the balls that you think you will definitely, you know, make something out of. So I think that's that's obviously that's managing a, a problem, which it's still working for him. But how many mm. more years have we got of James Vardy at the top level? That's the only question. I mean, to be honest, when it comes to Jamie Vardy, like I, I'm, I rate the fact that he's even at this age still piping in goals as regularly as he has done. He's his longevity has been an absolute madness this season. Hang on, Jamie Vardy has put the ball in the net at the end of the day, and people don't realise that Harvey Barnes has got ten this season. So yeah, Harvey Barnes is having an amazing season, isn't he? Yeah. So we're we're more than just a Jamie Vardy now. Uh, you know, it's easy punditry to just say you're to just say you're a one man team and not look at the other ten players. Like we've had the same thing as well when we were Eden Hazard FC for yeah. the longest, and we still had other players carrying us through the games. Like, yeah. I was saying the same yeah. thing with you lot as well with Vardy in the Europa League. You don't even need him for the most part. Eden Hazard played about two games in the entire run in, and one of them was a the final as well. Other yeah. than that, we barely saw him. He didn't even play the first leg of the semi final, if I remember correctly, against Frankfurt. We only yeah, had that sounds about right. 